Yeah. So I um, frequently listen to podcasts or watch a video from Zen, various Zen masters talking about how to do meditation. And it gets me, and sometimes it gets me more confused and I get clarity about how, how I should be practicing. Yeah. Um, so for example, watching your thoughts. Uh, some will say, you know, you, you, you need to label it and say, I'm having this thought that this. Others say, you just say thinking. Um, another might say, you, you just note it and let it go. And, that, and those are three different kinds of ways of approaching how you handle a thought when it arises during meditation. I'm, not, I'm a little confused. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, usually those in the Zen tradition will not say any of those things. That's more, uh, I don't say that you can't find some Zen teacher <laughs> somewhere that, you know, but that's more something that's used more often in the Vipassana tradition, the insight meditation tradition. And different ones within that tradition have different ideas, of, you know, uh, so, uh, it would be the same, similar to uh, if you go to a Japanese Zen center, the first thing they may teach you is to follow your breath with counting. And usually they say count your out breaths up to 10 and then start again. Okay. So after a while, they may tell you if you don't need the counting to hold yourself. Uh, you know, tightly, let go of the counting, just follow your breathing. So that's a little less holding the reins, although you still have one object which is keeping you in the present, the flow of your natural breath. And then at a certain point, they may say to you, now you don't need to exclusively follow your breathing. Just sit and have open awareness of whatever arises in your attention, moment by moment by moment. So sometimes that primary thing that might be in your attention is your breath. Sometimes some thought. Sometimes some sensation in your body. Sometimes an open sense of expansiveness, you and the room and everything, sometimes a sound out in the street. So there you have even less of a narrow focus to hold on to. Uh, so uh, similarly, in the way you were describing it, some will say, uh, label the thought, some will just say, note that it's a thought, you know, there are varying degrees of <laughs> how much they want to make, you know, something to reel you in with, uh, uh, you know, reel your thinking mind in with. Uh, uh, but uh, in the Zen tradition, usually we will not label or, you, you know, uh, thinking is thinking. Thinking is coming, thinking is coming. Feeling is feeling. Feeling is coming, feeling is coming. Sounds are sounds. Sounds are coming, sounds are coming. Whatever it is, that's just it. And there is a moment before, I mean, we habitually label everything, you know, because we've conceptually re related to things. Uh, uh, and we make names for things. So uh, that's a you know, long-standing habit for human beings. Uh, but there is really no intrinsic relationship between the name cushion and that object over there. We have made that and attached that. That's why sometimes uh, Zen Master Sung San, when he was teaching, he would say, the sky never said, I'm blue. The tree never said, I'm green. So there is a moment before we reactivate the labeling where we just perceive without any labeling. You, know, you hear a sound, oh. you see something, oh. Yeah. Doesn't necessarily have to be as, as vivid as that. Even. But uh, so uh, usually in the Zen tradition, we don't add on a labeling process. But that's a 
specific technique, you could say a particular medicine for a particular disease. <laughs> if you have a lot of thinking, then that's one way to uh, reel it in a little bit. Just like the counting, one to ten is giving yourself a little more to do than just following your breathing. You know? uh, but the, uh, you could, most meditation techniques fall into one of two categories, but usually those categories are not completely discrete. There's no more. One would be techniques that tend towards stabilization, becoming quiet, becoming concentrated. The other group of techniques is not so much about becoming quiet and still and concentrated as perceiving what is, seeing into. And in fact, uh, Zen Master Sung San once told me that the Chinese ideogram for insight uh, originally was like an eye with two legs, which meant to see into. <laughs> so, uh, that style of meditation is not so much concerned with stabilization and concentration as it is with clear mind. But of course, if you sit and focus on something, there's going to be some degree of concentration and stabilization. And if you sit and concentrate on something, primarily, uh, Sometimes, when you let go of the concentration, you'll see more clearly, at least for a while. So, the uh, main thing is stay in the present, just perceive, and in our tradition, we emphasize this, have one big question about my self-nature. What am I? Who am I? We're reading this Taoist thing before, and it's something about coming from some. Uh, there's a poem uh, in the Buddhist tradition. It says, "Coming empty-handed, going empty-handed. When you're born, where do you come from? When you die, where do you go?" So that's a big question. <laughs> when you're born, where do you come from? You're left with a sense of perplexity then, and a sense of wonderment about it. Yeah, what? When I die, where do I go? Man, don't know. And when, when you're born, where do you come from? doesn't just mean when you came out of your mother. Moment by moment, we're being born. Something is always emerging. Right? And moment by moment, something is always dissolving. So, birth and death are happening non-stop. So, if you pay attention in the moment, birth, death, comes from where? What is it? See? So, that sense of question, if you entertain that sense of question, that question itself acts as a stabilizer of attention and also acts as a provoker of looking into Zen tradition, they say, words of the question are like the finger that points towards the moon. But the point of the question, where the words point you towards, is the moon itself. So the words act as a stabilizer and as a provoker of insight and a provoker of something before words and speech, ideas, concepts, and opinions. So, we emphasize that even if you're using some other technique along with it, if you're, let's say, following your breathing in formal meditation, it's good. But periodically, you can ask yourself also, who is practicing this? Now, you know it's no one else but you sitting there. Going, <laughs> okay? But exactly what this who is, you know, what this I is that's practicing, that's a question mark. <laughs> 
And so you have a moment where you have that feeling of the question mark. With that openness, continue perceiving your breathing. Same if you were practicing with a mantra. Who is practicing? If you want to just stay open, what is this? What is this moment by moment? What is this mind, this moment? What is this? So any of those provoke a certain kind of clear seeing, looking into something. That's more the emphasis in the Zen tradition. Mm -hmm.